Hello everyone, Gareth the Master 974 back again today doing another Valve source code tutorial. This time around I'm going to demonstrate how to add D lights into your mod, specifically for cases where you have a weapon and you want to use the weapon and create a light. So for example when there's a muzzle flash you want the surrounding area to be illuminated with light of a particular colour that you specify. Now I have to give thanks to commenters Waddles SB737 recaps and SJ, 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 great names. And they inspired me through their comments to make this video, so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing today. So enjoy, everyone. So, the first thing you want to do is navigate to your source code directory and open up the games solution as per usual. And in the client project in C underscore base animating.cpp, you want to find the function process muzzle flash events and specifically an if statement that goes something like m underscore attachments dot count is greater than zero and you want to replace the code that's there with something like vector v attachments and v ang as shown then a q angle called angles then get attachment of one v attachment and angles then do angle vectors of angles and v ang, and then v attachment plus equals v ang multiplied by two. So the attachment number one is usually the muzzle. So that's why we're doing what we're doing and we're trying to get a vector, which is the muzzle point of the weapon, which could be any point in three dimensional space. And then we're gonna do d light underscore t asterisk called dl which equals effects arrow cl underscore alloc d light of index. Now index is a C base entity parameter. It's just going to be assigned to a C base entity when it spawns, I guess. So that's a parameter we're allowed to use. And then we're going to do dl arrow, which I'm going to refer to as dla. So just to save myself a bit of time and effort. So dla origin equals the attachment. Then DLA color dot R equals 255. DLA color dot G equals 192. DLA color dot B equals 64. Then DLA die equals GP globals arrow cur time plus 0.05F. Then DLA radius equals random arrow random float of 245 and 256. And then DLA decay equals 512. So what you should find is if you build the solution, it should work properly. And for any weapon that uses a muzzle flash, like the pistol, the 357, the SMG, the shotgun, the AR2, they all should now illuminate the area around you with a light that is reasonable, I feel. But you can change the numbers to whatever you want. You can change the radius, you can change the decay. You can change the RGB values. You can even change the exponent, which is how bright the light actually is, which I'll get to in a little bit if you want to know how to do that. But of course, this wouldn't be a good video if I only talked about this. So there's going to be a couple examples and I'm going to follow up on my stun stick and fizz gun tutorials here. So if you haven't checked those out, I would advise you to do so because I'm going to be dealing with the files that I would have told you about creating in those tutorials. So come back here when you've took a look at those videos to be in a position to follow these next steps. So inside of cweaponstunstick.cpp at the top of the file with all the hashtag include stuff, you want to add hashtag include dlight.h and hashtag include r underscore efx.h. That allows us to gain access to the dlight underscore t class but also the effects name that we would have used in the C underscore base animating file. And inside of the function draw first person effects, we're going to add something like if in swing, then vector v attachment, q angle called temp ang, get attachment of spark rear v attachment and temp ang. Now spark rear is being used because this is defined as the attachment where the core effects for the stun stick glow happens. So we want the D light to be there at this core. Then we're gonna create a D light underscore T called asterisk DL, which equals effects arrow CL alloc D light of index. Again, DLA origin equals the attachment. Then DLA color 
dot R, G, and B are set to 245. So that's 245 in the R, in the G, and the B. And then same for the die, radius, and decay, as I would have just said for the C base animating purpose. But what this should do is, if you have the stun stick and you fixed up the glow effects and followed my tutorial about fixing up the stun stick, then when you swing the stun stick, it should light up with a not solid white, but a little less than solid white kind of light. And yeah, it looks pretty good to me. So that's uh, something you can do if you want to. It makes sense because the glow effects should illuminate the area around it, but it doesn't by default. So that's why I've done this step. And because a couple of the comments that I mentioned from users that inspired this video mentioned this. So here you go. Now I'm going to move on to a more personal example. I'm going to go to C Weapon Gravity Gun, which is the client side code for the Fizz Gun. And again, at the top of the file with the hashtag include stuff, you want hashtag include dlight.h and hashtag include r underscore efx.h. And inside the draw model function, I'm going to create a dlight underscore t called asterisk dl, but it's an array of size 3. And then for int i equals 0, i less than 3, and i plus plus, we're going to do dli equals effects arrow cl alloc dlight. And I define this as m underscore view model index plus i. I think if you set the index to be the same number, then only the end light ends up getting drawn instead of three different lights. And I'm going to say DLIA now. So DLIA origin is points I. So in the Fizzgun code, you have points 0, points 1, and points 2. And that represents the firing position of the Fizzgun, then a point halfway between the weapon shoot position and the end position, and then the end position. So we're creating a D light at each point that we've defined. So it's going to be the start, the end, and the middle. Then DLIA color dot r equals 159. Then DLIA color dot g equals 255. And DLIA color dot b equals 255. And you can do DLIA color dot exponent equals minus 2. So this makes the light not too bright, but gives it a little bit of subtlety. Then DLIA die equals GP globals arrow cur time plus 0.05F. Then DLIA radius equals random arrow random float of 245 divided by I plus 1 and 256 divided by I plus 1. So what this is doing is it's decreasing the size of the D light as the beam progresses. So it starts off quite wide where the fizz gun's being fired, but then slowly tapers down as you get to the end point. So you don't get too much of an overpowering light at the end point where the fizz gun beam is at. And then DLIA decay equals 512. And I've also done DLIA style equals one. So it causes the light to flicker a little bit. So it just makes it seem as if there's some instability going on. It makes it look like there's some fluctuations going on with the beam. And I think that looks quite nice. Oh boy, last but not least, I'm going to demonstrate how to add a glow with batteries. So this was inspired by another viewer, which I, you know, suggested that I couldn't get it to work. And the main reason for this D-Lite stuff is because you have to do it on the client and not on the server. And for something like the battery, it's purely defined on the server. So you need to have a client side version of the battery code for stuff like D-Lites to work. So that's what I'm going to outline right now. So in item battery.cpp, you want to add declare server class and declare data desk under the declare class definition. Then in spawn, we're going to add battery pos for battery position equals get abs origin. It's going to be undefined for now, but we're going to define it later. Then set think and see item battery colon colon think. And set next think to GP globals arrow cur time. So we're going to be using a think function. So we'll define that right now. We're going to do void think passing through void inputs. We're going to say battery pos equals get abs origin. And for some reason, because I'm doing this, if a battery is spawned from an item crate, then you can't pick it up for some reason. I have no idea why this happens. So I'm going to have to outline a condition to make it so batteries from crates end up counting towards, you know, giving the player suit armor. 
So we're gonna to have to create a float distance, which equals collision prop brackets, then outside of the brackets, arrow calc distance from point of util get local player brackets, and then arrow get abs origin as shown. It goes without saying, but you can only use util get local player in a single player circumstance. So I deal with the single player code. So I'm allowed to do this kind of, you know, function to get the player. But then if distance is less than 20, we want to create a ball called is touching, which equals my touch of util get local player. Then if is touching, then util remove this and set next thing to null. And at the very bottom, set next thing to GP globals arrow cur time plus tick interval. So this think function is going to be operating on a per frame basis. And it's going to update this battery pause position, which we're going to network to the client. So let's define that. So let's create a C network var called battery pause, which is a vector. So C network var vector battery pause. Then we want to begin data disk of C item battery. We want to define field battery pause as a field position vector and define think func of think and end the data disk. And then implement a server class st of c item battery and dt underscore item battery. Then send prop vector of send info battery pause minus one and s prop coord and then end the send table. So as I mentioned, the battery stuff is purely defined on the server. So now we need to create some client side code to try and link the server side battery to some sort of client side code that handles the delight rendering stuff. So you want to, on the client, create a new file called something like C item battery. And you want to add hashtag include C base dot H, hashtag include R underscore EFX dot H, hashtag include D light dot H and hashtag include T a Z way forward slash mem db gone dot H. And we're going to create a class called C underscore item battery, which is a public C base animating. Now, if you're looking to C item battery on the server, you'd see that it derives from C item, but C item partially derives from C base animating. So the reason for this C underscore base animating sort of base class definition on the client isn't completely insane. There's some rationale and reasoning behind it and it works, hopefully. So we're going to create our public variables and I'm going to say declare class of C item battery C base animating, obviously include underscores because this is the client side version of the code, then declare client class and we're going to add two functions void on data changed passing through an input of data update type underscore T called update type and void client think passing through void inputs. And then we're going to create a private variable which is vector battery pause. Then we're going to implement client class DT of C underscore item battery, DT underscore item battery, and C item battery. Then rec v prop vector of rec v info underscore name of battery pause, then battery pause, and then end the rec v table. So what this is doing is defining our battery pause on the client and linking it to the server side battery pause vector. So the server and client versions of this battery pause vector are going to be synced. They're going to be set to the same value, which allows this whole thing to work. So then we're going to define our functions void C item battery colon colon on data changed, passing through our data update type input. And we're going to do base class colon colon on data changed of update type, and then set next client think to client think always. And then in void C item battery colon colon client think, we're going to do delight underscore t called asterisk dl, which equals effects arrow cl alloc delight of index. Then dl arrow origin or dla origin equals battery pause. Then dla color dot r equals 16. dla color dot g equals 252. dla color dot b equals 248. dla color dot exponent equals minus one. DLA die equals GP globals arrow cur time plus 0.05. DLA radius equals random arrow random float of 145 and 156. And DLA decay equals 512. And I do base class client think, but I don't think that actually does anything and it's not necessary. So you can add that if you want to. 
So if you've done everything that I've outlined, like followed the video and listened to what I said and followed it perfectly, then you should be able to compile your solutions and not only would weapons that have muzzle flashes now light up the area, but if you have a stun stick and you swing it, it lights up the area. If you have the fizz gun, then there's three D lights that created at the start, the middle and the end point of the beam. And for stuff like suit batteries, you have a D light that lights up the area and you can pick them up and the D light dies. And that's pretty much everything that I have to say about adding D lights into the source engine. Now there's bound to be other examples out there that you want me to look at. I'm probably not going to do that, at least not right now. It took me quite a long time to figure out this battery stuff to be honest. But it's not that bad when you really think about it. So with all that being said and done everyone, I hope you found the tutorial helpful. Hope you liked it. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and all that good stuff if you like these tutorials. And I'll see you next time for whatever I decide to do next. So peace out, take care out there and see you next time.